In this tutorial we're going to um, introduce the main elements of the root locus tool. So in order to use the root locus tool you need a transfer function um, and the transfer function represents the system whose controller you want to design. So for example it would represent the transfer function that you have for the cart, the transfer function that you have for the pendulum. I'm just going to begin with a simple first order transfer function. So I'm going to define my transfer function um, with a time constant of 10 seconds and a gain of 1. And then the command in MATLAB is RL tool. Um, and I give it the name of the transfer function that I, uh, whose controller I want to design. So hit return. And it opens up, it pops up a, a graphic uh, like this. And we spoke, we went through this in class, but I'm going to go through it again here. So um, first of all, this white screen here represents the S plane. So the zero here is the imaginary axis. This is the real axis. Um, and our closed loop system is represented up here. So G is the transfer function of the system that we're designing. So our 1 over 10 is plus 1. C is the controller. H and F we're not using at the moment, and we won't be using in this course, so you can ignore them. Um, as I said, the value for G, we know we've entered that. The current value for C is given over here. Okay, so in the root locus tool, um, MATLAB calls the controller a compensator, and it begins with the default value of 1. So C is equal to 1. Coming back to this um, screen here, the, the root locus editor, the X here, the blue X that you see, represents the pole of this system here. So if you want to look at that, pole G of S, um, we can see the pole is S is equal to minus 0.1, which corresponds with what we're seeing here. The pink square then corresponds to the closed loop pole. Okay, so the closed loop pole is the combination of our compensator C and the transfer function G here with this feedback, like we'd calculated in class. The closed loop transfer function is um, C by G over 1 plus C by G in this case. So um, if you work that out, then you will get a closed loop hole here at minus 0.2. And as we, if we change this gain, so from um, inc increasing the gain, K is equal to 10, then we're going to affect the location of that pole. So it shifts from the value over here, minus 0.2, to almost minus 1.1. Okay, and changing this closed loop pole then is going to affect the uh, performance of the system. So we can view the performance of the closed loop system from this um, analysis menu and click on the response to step command. And you get a, uh, res you get a graph like this one here. So there are currently two signals on this graph. The blue signal is the response at this point here, okay, the output of our system, right? Um, whereas the green trace is the control signal, so the uh, signal that's coming out of our controller and going into our system. So if this is a real system, the green signal would be the signal that you'd be applying to the motor to drive the cart, right? Uh, if you don't want to view that, if it complicates things a bit too much for you, just um, right-click on, on this white screen, go into Systems, and um, disable it. So it's the closed loop RTU, the green one. Right, and we're just left with our closed loop response. And as I said, then changing the gain, so K is equal to 10, um, gives us a closed loop response like this. It's useful to put on some measure of the speed of response. So we put on, for example, a measure of the settling time. So our settling time is about three and a half seconds. And if I change this gain, then k one ten down to one, our settling time increases, and we're now at a settling time of about twenty seconds. And so changing the controller gain affects the closed loop response, <coughs> which in turn affects the speed of response. Um, the main idea then behind the root locus tool is to use this to design an appropriate controller. Uh, in general, what you would 
like from a closed loop system is to obtain sort of the fastest response that you possibly can get. Looking at this, you can click and drag the, the poles here as well. As we move the poles towards the imaginary axis or towards the zero, in general what you're going to get is um, a slower and slower response. So here we have a, a settling time of about 30 seconds and as we move the closed loop pole to the left then that response increases. This response time increases so we're now at um, just over 11 and a half seconds. And as we continue to increase this so our gain of 10 we had a response time of three and a half seconds. If I increase that up to 100 then we have a gain of point, uh, we have a, sorry, a settling time of 0.4 seconds. Right. And in theory, in simulation, you can make that gain as large as you want and the response time continues to increase. Obviously there is some limit to how fast you can, a response you can get in practice and that limit is dictated by the control signal here. So if I right click on that, this screen here again and look at my control signal, you can see now that the peak amplitude here at the moment is 100. Um, in practice, our control signal is limited to plus or minus 10 um, volts. It's limited by the data acquisition card and it's limited by the power amplifiers and things associated with the, the well, it's limited by the motors really, I guess. Okay, so um, can you uh, generate 100 volts and apply it to our motors? No, you can't. So um, the implication of that then is that there's no way you're going to get this 0.4 of a second, uh, 0.4 of a second set of time because you can't generate or apply this very large input voltage. Um, so you can look at then, okay, what sort of gain am I limited to in order to get a control signal that's limited to um, plus or minus 10 units? In this case, a gain of around 10 gives us that. So the settling time that we're looking at here, if I just get rid of my control signal again, is probably much more realistic, something around 3 seconds. Okay, That's probably achievable, whereas the other one isn't achievable because you could never generate the energy that you need um, to create that. Okay, so in summary, the main idea, as I said, changing the gain affects the closed loop poles. Um, the location of the closed loop Holes dictates this um, response. The root locus then is a plot of all possible locations of the closed loop poles. So for my system, um, I'm limited between here, s is equal to minus 0.1, and all along the real axis here out to s is equal to minus infinity. I can put my closed loop hole anywhere along that, uh, but nowhere else. Right? Um, and then finally, in general, the philosophy is to shift the closed loop holes over here as far to the left as you can possibly can within reason. Uh, that's a very simple design strategy, um, and the root locus tool provides an easy way to realize that. So in the next tutorial, part two, I'm going to look at a more realistic example. Take uh, a transfer function that represents, for example, your carts and look at um, changing my compensator here to include, for example, a PI controller or something.